everybody. Welcome to Championship Bowling, where each week we present two of the nation's outstanding bowling stars in match game condition. $1,000, three games, total pins will decide the winner. This is Fred Wolf speaking to you from the beautiful Coliseum Lanes here in Coral Gables, Florida. Back for his sixth consecutive appearance. And boy, the sun is shining for this fellow from St. Louis. We have Ray Blooper Bluth. Throwing that blooper in there. No, it's, uh, not at all. You've been blooping pretty good down here for five weeks. Ray, your winnings are now $5,900. You have compiled a sensational average of two twenty-five dollars for 15 games. I'm proud of you. Well, I feel pretty good. But I have a sneaking hunch you're going to have to go real good this week because we got a real toughie for you right from your hometown, incidentally. Yes, I know. Let's bring You know? Oh, yeah. Let's bring him out here, the Tiger, Harry Smith from St. Louis. Hi, Freddie. Nice you? to be here. Fine. So we got the tiger in the blooper. This ought to result into something. Harry, I know you've appeared on championship bowling before, but I will brief you on the rules. $1,000, three games will decide the winner and decide which of you two fine young gentlemen will be here again next week. In addition to that, $50 to the winner of the first game, $75 to the winner of the second, of $100 to the winner of the third. And on top of all that, should either or both of you gentlemen roll a 300 score, It'll be worth $10,000. Sounds real good, Freddie. You will agree to that? Yes, sir. Now, there has been a flip of the coin here for starting alley, and uh, somebody won the toss. I won the toss. Ray. I'm starting on 23, ending you'll, on 24. You'll finish on 24, the first and third game, right. and, Harry, you will start on alley 23 in game number two. Gentlemen, ABC rules prevail. This is ABC sanctioned competition. A little handshake here, and we're going to let you boys go to it. Everybody ready? Okay. Smith, St. Louis. Bluth making his sixth consecutive appearance, averaging 225 for 15 games. He won the toss, starts the first frame. Gary! So Bluth will uh, take his seat, and up comes the Tiger from St. Louis, Harry Smith. Now the competition here. As we have pointed out to you in previous matches on championship bowling, the odd alley, or the alley that we occasionally refer to as the left side, starts each game. The other bowler bowls two frames, and then, of course, they continue to go around two frames at a time. Smith ready, throws it out, and he is in, and he carries. <laughs> Harry Smith, who will be... Uh, Flying around the approaches here at the Coliseum Lanes in Coral Gables, he's a boy that throws that ball and then goes into a jig or two. You may find him jumping over the rack, doing almost anything to help that ball carry an additional pin or two along the line. Harry is an instructor in St. Louis, born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1930. He weighs 140 pounds, 5 feet 10 and a half inches tall, takes Four and a half steps, throws, gotta hurry. He gets there, look at that. So Ray Bluth, in his sixth appearance, will have his hands full, and that's been obvious here in the first two frames. And in practice sessions, in the past two days, Smith has had strings of strikes, 14, 15, as many as 18 in a row. Of course, in the practice sessions, the boys don't keep score, but you could chalk up a few 300s for him. Here's Blue Throws, and he's there. So Ray Bluth, uh, the real husky boy from St. Louis, has gone through five of these matches, and boy, there have been some thrillers. Last week against Ned Day, Ray gave uh, the great Ned Day a chance in the 10th frame. Ned needed two strikes and eight pins to win the match. He couldn't do it. In fact, he left the 8-10 in and, uh, and his first ball in the 10th, and Bluth came home the winner again. He has defeated Bill Willard of Chicago, Billy Golombieski of Detroit, Dick Hoover of Akron, Ohio, Lou Mandragona of Miami and Ned Day of West Dallas. In the third, hurry, 
He doesn't get there. He misses the head pin, the one, two. In checking back over the 15 games that Bluth has turned in here, turned them into five victories, he has only missed one spare, that being the one, two, ten. Now, we have mentioned before, and we're going to stick to it, that we just feel that the one, two, ten is a split, unofficially, of course. So, actually, let's assume that Bluth has not missed a spare. The one, two, he has. <laughs> He's had six splits that he has failed to convert, and the one miss, which, of course, is official as a miss, the one, two, ten. So he's had seven open frames in 15 games, which is a fine performance under these match game conditions. The alley's completely resurfaced to ABC specifications, all competition sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. Harry Smith with a chance to take the lead. He's on two, he throws too high. Does he carry? Boy, what the reaction the young fella got on that one. He had the 4, 7, 10 up there, and those pins just wanted to go. Those Brunswick Red Crowns getting into the pit in a hurry, and Harry Smith now has taken a 12-pin lead at the end of three. Harry Smith has only been bowling for 14 years. 27, 300. So Smith has all four. He got the break that he wanted. He took advantage of it and got another good one. So when you can get the lucky ones, you've got to take full advantage and come back with a good one, and that's exactly what Smith did. And here is Ray Bluth following the pattern of his first three matches when he lost the first game to each of his opponents but came roaring back. He's in the fourth. He throws too high. He does not cave it in, leaves the sixth pin. Ray Bluth, born in St. Louis, on New Year's Eve, back in 1928, has a nickname, the Gollum the Blooper. Throws a three-finger ball, quite a wide span. He says semi-finger tip, but that span will go as wide as four and three-eighths inches. And that's quite a stretch. Started as a pin setter. As a high school student, he converts the six pin in the fourth. So Harry Smith now has himself about uh, a 23-pin advantage at the end of four, getting away beautifully with four in a row. Two good ones, he caved one in and followed with a good one. Booth now moving to the left side. Joe's there, Gary. Well, just, just as smooth as silk, Ray Blue, more the automatic fella. Harry, a little fidgety, but Harry really can throw that ball. Harry throws what he calls a semi-fingertip. He stretches out there quite a ways, but uh, his little finger on his right hand, he does not lay on the ball. He tucks it in under the palm so that he gets uh, a peculiar action there as the ball rides off his little finger. There's another one. So Harry Smith uh, showing the folks here in Coral Gables quite a bowling ball. So he has the first five. At the end of five, Bluth 87 strike. Smith is all the way. This fella can tear them apart. He throws uh, a little more speed than Bluth. Uh, he's probably a little more to the outside, but he gives that ball room to go. And believe me, when it starts to make the left turn, it really comes. Here's Smith in the sixth frame. He has the first five. He dropped it right in the pocket. He's got it. Well, Smith didn't get that one over the foul line very far. It sounded like he just about might have dropped it on the line, but he had the lift he wanted. He had a beautiful angle, and that ten pin was hanging in midair, and he has the first six. He's halfway. He has a lead now of about 33 pins, and Bluth has got to get this one to stay within 33 pins of his opponent. Ray throwing. He's too high. He's on the nose, and he has a wide open split, and Harry Smith is flying. Harry Smith is long gone. Harry with the first six. Bluth started with two, missed a head pin. He was on a strike here in the fifth. He gave that one a little too much. Four, six, dead center. Ray 
Smooth now, moving to the left side. Ray with an open frame in the sixth. Bluth now will certainly have to go to work. He has 115 in the sixth frame. Ray throws, here he comes. So it'll be very interesting, and we certainly will stay with the action here in Coral Gables. The question, can Bluth come back and match strikes with this youngster from St. Louis, Harry Tiger Smith? He bowled in the Cleveland All-Star Classic when he was only 16 years of age. Shot his first 300 when he was 16 in Willoughby, Ohio. Toured the nation many years ago when he was 14 with a great Eddie Kep. He throws. He is no. He breaks it up. So Smith, who uh, caved one in on, a, on the, that alley in the third frame, tried it again. It didn't work. He left the six. So it gives Bluth a life at the end of seven. Bluth will be trailing by approximately 53 pins. He is on a strike in the seventh. Smith with this conversion will be on the spare. Cross alley, Smith has it. Very keyed up this week for this match. After all, Bluth, a fellow townsman, they're both from St. Louis, and they are definitely rivals. And Harry would very much like to send Mr. Bluth back to St. Louis to stay. We're in the eighth frame. Smith started with six. He throws. There. So Harry made a couple of mistakes. He got away with one. Second one, he couldn't collapse the six spin. He got the four out of there. So here is Ray Bluth in the eighth frame. A double here by Ray will cut the margin down to 44 pins. He throws, and here it comes. He's got it. Well, Ray Bluth, who has certainly faced this situation before, when he bowled Bill Lillard six weeks ago, he lost the first game by 45 pins, and he came storming back to win the match 649 to 631. Against Billy Golombieski of Detroit, it was a thriller. Bluth with 221 in the final game, winning it 605 to 601. He beat Dick Hoover 733 to 682. He beat Lou Mandragona, 700 to 580. Last week, he topped midday with 679. Just like that. So Ray Blue, not going to make it easy for Harry Smith. Smith got away to a great start. The first six in a row came to this alley, left the sixth pin in the seventh. He has a strike going for him in the eighth, and he's been high here twice. Smith still flirting with 279. Harry up short, four and a half, throws it out. Here it comes. Look at that. <laughs> Harry Smith really tearing those Brunswick red crowns apart. He did a ditzy doodle on both knees, did not let his hands touch the floor, held them up in the air, very colorful young fella, and I'm sure he'll capture the fancy of this crowd before long. Harry has appeared on championship bowling in previous matches, but has not been too successful. But he certainly has developed here in 1958. Let's watch him. He's in the 10th for 279. He's there, look at him. <laughs> Harry Smith, the tiger, and what a tiger he is. We're in the 10th frame. He has the first one. This one will give him a 270 game. 276 is the highest single game rolled in this series here at Coral Gables, Florida. And it was chalked up some weeks ago by Thurman Gibson, I believe, if our records are correct here. 276. He's in the 10th. He throws. Too high. Seven pins. So Harry Smith trying for his 10th strike of this, the first game. He started with six, was working on three, too high. Thurman 
Gibson rolled the 276 in his match against Joe Ostrowski of Philadelphia in the first game to go on to win 705 to 679. So Smith checks in with 268. Bluth is on three. Still kicking around 235. Four pin, and that hurts. Bluth needed that one very badly. So Ray, who has been averaging 225 plus for 15 games, will check in here with about 214. That'll drop his average one pin. And Harry the Tiger Smith off to a sensational start of 268. with the conversion, one open frame, very costly to Bluth, the 4-6. He was on a strike in the sixth frame. On this alley, incidentally, where he was just a bit high on a triple, leaving the four pin. And we have watched Bluth leave a lot of four pins here during the past six weeks. There's another four pin, same hit, Bluth settles. For 213. So the first game at Smith, 268. Bluth, 213. We'll be back for game number two here in Coral Gables, Florida. And this is Fred Wolf. We'd like you to give some attention to this interesting message. He scores for the first game, Ray Bluth, 213. Harry Smith, 268. Did you folks enjoy that game? Work, my boy. Thank you. Starting with six in a row, getting off to a flying start here. You have a lead, Harry, of about uh, 55 pins. I don't think that's them. enough, no, no. Yeah, you I know. got a lucky one in there, and uh, yes, you did. the brakes always even out, so yeah. I got to keep working. And you made it count, Harry, for winning the first game. There's your first $50. You're on your way to the big thousand. We're ready for game number two. Folks, how about a little encouragement now? Smith, St. Louis, nine strikes the first game. He started with six in a row. He has a lead of 55 pins over Ray Bluth. Also from St. Louis, Bluth making his sixth consecutive appearance, and the king is a bit wobbly on his throne right now. Smith ready, throws tight. <laughs> Harry giving uh, his opponent uh, a little pat, telling uh, Ray to come on, boy, let's get a couple of them. As long as you get three and I get four, everything's going to be all right. Bluth on the right now. Ray has had a little trouble on this alley. Got a four six. He's been high a couple of times. He throws inside. Doesn't carry the five pin. Now, Bluth definitely made a move. He moved slightly inside, trying to get on Harry Smith's line. But Harry's ball, which comes much more and much faster than Bluth's, uh, plays that line and gets that ball in solid. Bluth has to really give it a little extra to get it up there from that angle. But he's been a little high. Two four pins, a four six, a six pin, and he converts the five. Smith uh, sitting on a strike, Bluth working on the spare, and Harry has a chance to increase his margin if he can get the second one. Bluth, of course, will try to start that string that he certainly needs here in game number two. Championship bowling, Carl Gables, Florida. We're at the beautiful Coliseum Lanes. A capacity crowd here again this week to watch two of the nation's great stars in match game competition. Bluth throws it out too high on the nose. He has the 3-6. So Bluth uh, beginning to realize that he's got some real tough competition here. And it may be just a little bit too tough to handle. At least what we've seen. Smith has thrown 10 strikes. He got nine strikes the first game. And he has his first one here in the first frame of the second game. Cover by Ray 
Luth, the 3-6, certainly uh, not much to worry about when you can hit both pins with a ball as Ray does. And here is the Tiger. Harry Smith, St. Louis, has rolled 27 perfect scores, four of them sanctioned. A member of the National Match Game Team Champions in 1958. Also a member of the American Bowling Congress Team Champions in 1958. Hurry up. He carried it. Harry, shaking his head slightly, reading his lips, he said, wow, he didn't expect that one. He threw that one out into right field. But it came back. He got enough of the pocket to get the action that he wanted. And he has a double and now has increased his margin to 67 pins. Harry Smith, the 1954 Ohio State match game singles champion. Went to Detroit in 1954 from Cleveland to St. Louis in 57. One more. So Smith following his uh, pattern of the first game when he started with a first six. Now that's a total of 12 strikes. He's only bowled one game in three frames. So we really have a Tiger here who is chewing him up. Bluth in the third. Ray throws. He's a little high, but he got it. Ray finally shaking up that four pin that time. In fact, the four and the seven. So Bluth now, with one to work on, has already lost 22 more pins to his younger opponent. He now trails by 77 pins. We're into the fourth of the second game of three. was the 1957 he repeated in 58 St. Louis match game champion that's it Luke now beginning to uh, find his mark and it'll be up to the Tiger now to see what he can do Luke forcing Smith to get another strike here actually to keep that margin at around 77 pins Harry has the first three and the way he's throwing that ball, he's not going to lose too many of them because he has a tremendous pocket. He can be thin and shake them up. He doesn't seem to be going in too high. His ball sets. And when he's in solid, there isn't much those 10 pins can do about it. Well, he certainly lost a powerhouse that time. They exploded, but nothing knocked the seven pin down. He got the wobble, the wiggle, and the Brunswick Automatic spin Pin Setter puts it right back there, off spot, so that Harry will have to convert this one for his spare in the fourth. So Ray Bluth has pulled 10 pins back with his double in the fourth. Smith unable to get his fourth. Look out, he's got it. So Harry Smith, now 79 and a spare. Ray Bluth is 38 in the second with strikes in the third and fourth. Harry moves to the left side. Harry's a fine billiard player, incidentally. Went to school in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Has a brother, Keith, who shoots around a 200 average, rolled a 300 game in 1956 in Cleveland. Ready. He just continues to throw them in that one three pocket. Makes with uh, very uh, peculiar motions with his hands. Uh, it seems like when he's sure of the ball, he's sure that he knows where it's going. He makes sort of a fast wave with his hand, and the ball rolls right into the pocket. Harry uh, took a walk during the first game to get a drink of water. We see that he has brought his water back with him, occasionally uh, refreshing himself. And we're in the fifth frame. Here's Blue. He's in there. Five here in the second game, filling in the 30s. We give Bluth 68, working on a double. Smith is 99 with a strike in the fifth. So as we go into the sixth frame, the second half here of game number two, Bluth within one pin of his opponent in this game. He trails now by 56 pins. He has a game and a half to get it back. He throws. He's there. He's got it. And 
and he is forcing Harry Smith to keep working. He started with two spares. He left a five pin, went too high, left a three six, has followed with four. Smith started with three, left a seven pin on a good hit. He is working on a strike here in the fifth. And no doubt thinking about that seven pin that he left in the fourth. So at the end of four, Smith is 99, Bluth 98. If Smith gets this one, one pin separates the boys. Here he comes. Well, that seven pin couldn't have stood that time. Boy, he really took care of the seven pin, didn't he? We're in the sixth. Smith now with a total of 14 strikes in actually 16 frames. He only got one strike in the tenth in the first game. He started with six, went high, left the six pin, had a strike in the eighth, one in the ninth, his first one in the tenth. Looked out, the six ten, and that's the first time that Smith has been that far out of that pocket, almost getting away with one on the Brooklyn side. He caved one in in the third frame of the first game. That's about the only time that he got away with a strike, actually. He was high again in the seventh. He left the six pin, could have been the four six. So Harry Smith stops at two, and it gives Ray Bluth a chance to move in. And Bluth, who has done this in many of his matches, certainly could possibly be on his way again. So at the end of seven frames for Smith, it's 145 and a spare. Bluth is 38 in the second, working on four strikes. Ray Bluth on his four strikes in a row makes this, the seventh frame, very important. Smith did not get his strike in the seventh. He was working on two. Bluth has the opportunity here to chop 20 pins out of that margin. He needs this one very badly. Will he get it? He's in the seventh. He throws. He's got to hurry. Hurry. Doesn't get there. And he has the, very oddly for a right-hander, he has the two and the seven. Bluth got a very small piece of the head pin. Just did not get up to the pocket. So Ray has a very unusual shot for a right-hander. The two seven. The idea here, of course, is just to, uh, Move slightly to the corner as Ray is. Throw the ball and hope that it hooks. Not enough, and Ray is open. His second open frame of the match. He had the four, six in the first game. And that, of course, gives Harry Smith the green light here as we go into the eighth frame of game number two. Harry has taken, actually, a 13-pin lead in the second game. That gives him about 68 pins to work on. What a difference a strike would have made there for Bluth. Ray throws in the eighth. Here he comes. He's got him. So one bad pitch, and we find the complexion leading toward this young fellow, the Tiger from St. Louis, Harry Smith. Harry, in his two years in Detroit, 1954, actually three years, 54, 55, and 56, he won the Michigan State Match Game Singles Championship two years in a row. Look at that. Did you ever see pins pile up on the seven pin like that? There was one pin going bottom, bottom end up, climbing right up on top of the seven pin. It had to fall over. Usually, uh, the pins will lay flat. Harry had one going straight up in the air. So the Brunswick Red Crowns are really jumping for this young fella as he gets the strike in the eighth. So at the end of eight, it's 154 strike, 167 strike. Here is Smith with the 167. He's in again, and there you have the five pin about three inches off spot. Harry will no doubt uh, move slightly to the left because the pin is actually two to three inches to the right. Got a lot of action, but the five pin remains standing. He has it. So he did not uh, 
get the full advantage of a strike in the eighth, and Ray Bluth, who of course had the open frame here in the seventh, on a strike, came back with one, and Ray still very much in the running here in game number two, but he needs this one. Ray still potential, 244 with an open frame. He throws, he's there. Four pin, a good hit, and that cost Mr. Bluth. That was the big difference. So Ray, instead of pulling up with his opponent, is still 13 pins behind here in game number two. The margin is back to 68 pins. Both boys will be on spares going into the 10th. And the only way that Ray can win this game would be to get three in the 10th, and Harry would have to have an open frame. He's got it. Bluth still flirting with a 224, and that four pin certainly uh, didn't help him any. And Alley 24 has been the bugaboo for Mr. Bluth this week. He had the 4 6 in the first game on Alley 24 on the right side. This game, he left the 2 7 and the four pin between strikes. Got a hurry. Doesn't get there, and he's short again the 2 5. Bluth, not as sharp as he's been the past three weeks. He was averaging around 234 for nine games running. For the 15 games, Bluth is averaging 225. So that gives Bluth 192 in the ninth. This conversion, the full count, will give him 212. You got it? Gary Smith already has two games tucked away. The question is, what will be his margin to go into the third game? Will he have enough? So Bluth, who started with 213, the full count here will give him 212. So he's losing a pin in his average each game. He's now down to 223 for 17 games. Ray throws, he's there. Got it. So the Tiger from St. Louis steps in again with the first game tucked away, 268 to 213. This game already in his pocket, just a matter of by how many. Harry is still 237 if we strike him out. Let's see what he can do. Tenth frame. Here it comes. First one. So Smith, who had nine strikes the first game, he started this game with three, caught a double, missed on his single. He now has seven strikes this game. He can get nine strikes in his second game also. Eighteen strikes in two games. And that's not a bad percentage. He's not had an open frame. He throws. He's got a hurry. Look at that. The four pin falling this way. So Harry Smith has shown us the most active ball in all of our matches thus far here in Coral Gables, Florida, at the Coliseum Lanes on championship bowling. And some of the veteran bowlers who reside here in Coral Gables are seeing quite a thing when this young fellow just literally tears them apart. Too high. On the nose, he's satisfied. He gets nine pins. So in the second game, it's Ray Blue, 212, Harry Smith, 236. Now before game number three, the real big one. Question, does Ray Bluth stay in Coral Gables? Does Harry Smith stay in Coral Gables? Pay attention to this message, and we'll find out. He scores for the second game. Ray Bluth, 212. Not enough. Harry Smith, 236. Tiger? Well, Harry, you have a lead of 79 pins. I was just doing a little figuring here. If you shoot 222, he will need 301. That's getting to sound better all the time. You think you can get 222 this game? I'm going to try. I'm not going to let up a bit. Harry, for winning the second game, you have won 75 additional dollars. You have a lead of 79 pins. Go get that 222, and we'll see if Mr. Bluth can get 301. Okay, right? Freddie, I'm Ready? Try. Ready for the big one. Come on, 
Ray Bluth with his back to the wall, trailing by 79 pins, as a fellow townsman of his, Harry Smith, has literally, well, just about uh, torn the pins apart here for two games. So you have to look at things this way, and you always do in bowling, because you always must figure the potential. So let's give Blue 300. It means that Smith will need 222 to win the match. Smith has a total of 17 strikes in two games. On this alley, boy, he has really thrown some balls. Look at that. This fella, this fella's got a, a pocket a yard wide on the right side, LA 24. He doesn't leave the four pin. He caves in the four, the seven. He carries the solid ones, and boy, when he's thin, there's about four pins. Go climb on that seven pin for the mixer. And, of course, that's the secret when you can carry all kinds of pocket hits. When you got a ball as powerful as this kid, and you know where it's going, you can be pretty tough. And tough he is. Ready, throws. Brooklyn side, he did not throw that one where he wanted it. He has the three six. So Ray Bluth, trailing by 79 pins, still can make a contest out of this. We can remember a few weeks back when Buddy Bomar was reigning as King of the Hill. He met Eddie Brocious. Brocious was trailing by some 60 pins, and he almost pulled it out of the fire with 257. Look out! He's got it. So Ray Bluth now moving to the right side, and Ray cannot afford to have many spares. 79 pins, he's got to have a big one, and Harry Smith, of course, has got to fall apart, and that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So Ray better get every one he can get. We're in the third game of Bluth's six consecutive appearance on championship bowling, and here he comes. He's got So Bluth has 10 of those 79 pins back. He's got 69 more to get. This strike will cut it to 59 with seven frames to go. Ray Bluth rolled his first sanctioned 300 score December 13th, 1947. One of his big thrills says that he'll never forget it. But he's done a lot of wonderful things since then. We're in the third. He throws. He's going to be there. He's got it. So don't go away, Mr. Ray Bluth, with a 79-pin deficit, staring him right in the face, knows he's got to go and go big. Harry Smith knows that if he can get 222, he's home free, even if Bluth goes all the way. Smith in the third, throws, he's got it. Like a ton of bricks, so he has his spare in the third. Bluth has the first three. Ray has chopped 20 pins off the 79, and he's got seven more frames to do some chopping. Here he comes. Look at that. Well, Harry keeps a pin uh, flying around between that four and seven. I don't know where it comes from, but he's had uh, two or three like that. And, of course, you know that he can carry the thin ones. And when you can carry the high ones, as we just mentioned, you just got to be tough. So Harry Smith on his way to a sensational 700 series. Here is Ray Bluth with the first three strikes in a row. He can't afford to even get a spare. He's got to have strikes. He throws one more. He's got it. So there could be something very sensational here in the making. At the end of four, Bluth is all the way. Smith has been out of the pocket once. He left the three six. He's on a double. So as we fill in the 30s on the score, it has Bluth with 60, Smith with 40, the margin 59 pins. Bluth can take 10 more away from Smith if he gets this one, and Harry does not follow with his third in the fifth frame. Ray peering over the top of that ball. Pull.
Throws it slightly to the right. Throws, and here it comes. Right there. Ray Bluth has thrown five of the most perfect strikes you will ever see. All five of them have been in exactly the same spot, and Harry Smith is beginning to wonder whether or not he is actually going to need 222. Now, to get 222, Harry still needs some strikes. Here's the alley that he's sure been getting him on. He waves that ball a few times, and here it comes. He's got it. So at the end of five, in one of the most sensational matches we've had here in Coral Gables, Florida, Ray Bluth is all the way with five strikes. Smith is 40 in the second frame, and he's working on three strikes. Smith now moving to the left side. All he's thinking about, without a doubt, is 222. That's all he needs. Here he comes. He's there. Look at that boy work. Right down, practically uh, sitting on the floor, believe me. He started on his knees and ended up uh, right down there, throwing his two arms out, uh, out in the, into the air. We thought possibly he was going to touch the floor with his hands, but he very gracefully keeps his hands up high. And here is Ray Bluth faced with the task of rolling a 300 score, actually, Bluth, knowing that Smith, with 222, can still defeat him, now is going, of course, for the $10,000, and he throws in that pocket again. That's the first time that Bluth has actually been out of the pocket on a real solid hit, but boy, he came in thin and threw about four of them over at the seven pin. The last pin caught it right at the neck, right at the red crown. So Bluth has the first six. He's halfway. That's what Smith did to start this match off in the first game, starting with six. So as we fill in the 30s, and that's a very easy way to keep score, isn't it? Just add 30 every frame. Bluth is 120 with a double. Smith, 100 with a double. We're in the seventh frame. Once more. He's got it. Look out there, Raymond. Look out. So Ray Bluth was down on his knees. Ray doesn't do that too often. He uh, wanted the ball to come up. He thought possibly he might be just a little short. The ball rolled beautifully, and Ray almost tripped. Uh, coming back, but he straightened himself out, and here is young Harry Smith, who was on the spot again. Now, Harry has four in a row. You would say a four-bagger without any openers is a 220 game, and that's about what it is if he gets good counts. But this strike should just about wrap it up. He's got it! Smith is not going to take any chances. He gets his fifth strike in a row, and what a contest we are seeing here in Coral Gables, Florida, at the beautiful Coliseum Lanes on championship bowling. They don't make it too easy for the boys. They've got to go out and work. And here you see two gentlemen who throw two of the finest bowling balls in the business. Smith throws. He's in the eighth. Too high, the four-seven. So Smith has still got to do some bowling in the last two frames to get his 222. Although with five in a row, he can have an open frame in either the ninth or tenth. If his counts are reasonably good enough, he can stumble home with 222 and win this match, even if Bluth shoots 300. Ray Bluth, stepping in in the eighth, fighting almost a losing battle to win this match, but fighting something much greater. Twelve strikes, $10,000. Pushes that ball to the right. Off he goes. He throws. Here he comes. Here he comes. Eight pin. Well, Ray just a bit disappointed. Put his hands in his pocket, out at the hand dryer, a bit disappointed. He thought he threw it where he wanted it, 
But the 810 was up there, the 10 finally leaving, and he has nothing but the 810. So Bluth, who started with seven in a row, has not actually won the third game yet. He's got the spare. At the end of eight frames, it's Bluth now 199 and to spare. Smith is 178 and to spare. Bluth leading by 21 pins. The margin is 58 pins with two frames to go. Ray just needed every single strike. And as we mentioned very kiddingly on the opening of the show, that Smith needed 222 to cinch it, Bluth really tried to go for that 301. He's got that one. Well, it's too bad. An eight pin standing between Ray Bluth and his first nine strikes in a row. So Ray will boost that average back up to around 226 for 18 games. His winnings will reach something like $6,300. And here is the youngster from St. Louis who has stepped into the breach and has caused Mr. Bluth a slight headache. On the nose, three pin breaks it up. And Smith has not had an open frame. He's broken up everything that has been bad. He's been on the nose a few times. So Harry, with nothing but the three pin, between him and a spare in the ninth, trails by 22 pins, and it looks like Ray should win the third game. Three pin converted. So Harry Smith, nine strikes the first game. He had eight strikes the second game. This game he has six strikes, five of them in a row, and he has a chance, of course, for three more, which would be 26 strikes. That's almost nine strikes a game. He needs three more, of course, here in the 10th. Look at that. He sure can keep them dancing, can he? Looked like the pins were on strings that time. His first strike in the 10th, he can get 247, which would force Bluth to mark. Bluth could actually get nine pins and tie. Harry throws, no, too high. He breaks it up, the 4-7. So it'll be 237 with these two pins. And Harry Smith will check in here with uh, about 740, which will be the highest three games rolled here in this series in Coral Gables, Florida. In 16 thrilling matches, Harry Smith. Oh, he just took it real nice and easy on that one. It didn't mean a thing. So it's 236. So Ray Bluth now with a chance to roll the highest single game, 279. Thurman Gibson still has the big one, 276, rolled some weeks ago. Smith had 268 the first game. About the same kind of a game. Goes, here he comes. He gets it. There's a hit, certainly, that uh, was not as good as the one he lost in the eighth frame. So Ray Bluth now has already nine strikes. He started with seven, left the eight pin in the eighth, a strike in the ninth, his first one in the tenth, a chance for 11 strikes for 279. Ray had a 268 game a few weeks ago when he rolled 10 strikes and left two 10 pins. There's another one. So Ray Bluth, who certainly is coming back beautifully, but a bit too late, 213 and 212, of course, uh, is the story. As far as Bluth's defeat is concerned, Ray was averaging 225 for 15 games. He was under his average, had an open frame in each game, 4-6 in the first game, the 2-7 split in the second game, couldn't bunch his strikes until the third game when it was too late. He's in, he has it for 279. A great game by Ray Bluth. So the third game, Bluth, 279. Smith, 236. 
We'll be back for the final results and a word or two about next week's challenger after this interesting word. Here are the official scores. Ray Bluth, 213, 212, and 279 for 704. For Harry Smith, 268, 236, and 236. The total is 740. Did you like that? <laughs> A very wonderful exhibition. I want to congratulate both of you boys. And Ray, to you first, you won the last game with a tremendous 279 very eight pin was a little expensive yes it was there's your 100 dollars check for 300 dollars that'll send you back to st louis in pretty good shape you're winning six thousand three hundred dollars you average 227 for 18 games ladies and gentlemen that is pretty good and we have a new fella here that may be around for quite a while too harry Thank you, tiger Ray. there's your one thousand dollars and you're off to a great start i noticed the figures are the same but we got that four and O uh, back uh, you got the four up front i'm glad it worked out that way that, may, <laughs> that makes you the winner harry we'll see you next week okay Freddie, i'll be back he'll be back you can bet on it harry good luck to you Next week, here at the beautiful Coliseum Lanes in Coral Gables, Florida, Harry the Tiger Smith from St. Louis will be back. His opponent from Chicago, the veteran, Eddie Kowalitz. Until then, this is Fred Wolf just a saying good bowling to you. Are available at dealers everywhere.